So the um, great advantage of the Rainer platform of lenses is that the design of the lens is the same across all different models. So once the surgeon is familiar using one, it's very easy to switch from one to the other. The injector is the same. The unfolding, the, um, the way the lens behaves in the eye, the preparation of the injector is, is the same. So the EMV um, lenses are hydrophilic lenses, glistening free, um, very easy to inject, uh, low silicon oil adherence and excellent biocompatibility. And this is the injector. So the injector comes in saline solution. The saline is exchanged with the viscoelastic. And then there is the uh, uh, rock and roll system <laughs> of closing the cartridge, closing the injection, uh, the injector, and, and preparing for the implantation of the lens. So two-step system. This can be done by the scrub nurse or can be done by the surgeon under the microscope, depending on uh, preference but it's, it's quite um, easy to use. Um, so the EMV have the advantage of increasing the range of focus in the near intermediate range. So it's basically a monofocal lens, but has the advantage of increasing the visual function in the intermediate range of focus. So the great advantage of this lens is that now we are facing patients more and more using uh, electronic devices, iPads, computers, and less and less of patients reading on hard copies, books, or small books. And obviously the electronic devices have got the advantage of uh, adjusting the font, adjusting the brightness, and these are great um, uh, helpful factors when we use a lens, with, which is a monofocal with the intermediate correction. So it re it's really, really extending the possibilities and extending the flexibility of the patient in being more glasses free. Um, the EMV has been first promoted as a lens that can be used as a monovision lens, so doing an offset, one, the dominant eye for distance and the non-dominant eye slightly on the myopic range, but it can also be used as an emetropic lens for both eyes with the addition of plus 1.5 for the intermediate vision. Uh, and obviously the uh, technical aspects are that there is a positive um, uh, spherical uh, aberration, there is an enhancement of the range of focus in the intermediate. So when we talk to a patient, we explain that it will enhance the vision and the focus in the range of 50 to 70 centimetres, but we need to be very clear in the consenting and information that anything below 40 centimetres uh, distance will still need the use of reading glasses. So if we put the expectation right at the beginning in the consultation of the patient, then we are quite confident to have a happy patient at the end. So how do we assess patients? When there is a new lens on the market, the first question for a clinician is, which one will be the patient when I'll be offering this lens at the time of the consultation? Uh, will they be happy? Um, so we need to really explore and what they like to do, their hobbies, their function, their visual function, the main activities during the day, uh, if they are outdoor people, if they want to be glasses free, if they don't mind having a pair of glasses for reading. So we really need to talk to them and investigate what they do, explaining that this is to select the best lens for them. Obviously, the assessment of the cornea, the assessment of the presence of astigmatism is essential because when we do something like this, we want to achieve, again, emetropic correction. Um, so uh, always uh, examine the patient, perform the biometry. The topography is always essential to assess the regularity of the astigmatism, assessing the ocular surface and the tear film, and obviously excluding patients with scarring, ocular dystrophies, cornea dystrophies, and comorbidities. Um, so my first case <laughs> that I selected for the EMV, I was thinking about the EMV for some time and, and assessing patients and obviously listening to podcasts. The Rainer podcasts are very helpful and there are many podcasts of many different types of EDOF and IROF lenses available to try to understand how we can place this lens in our clinical practice. So I had this 68-year-old uh, female presenting with bilateral cataract, 624 vision in the right, 612 in the left, and she was a patient uh, with Parkinson's disease. So this lady lives alone, she has Parkinson, she has a significant head tremor and hand tremor, and she told me immediately that she was unable to hold a book, she was also unable to use reading glasses because the reading glasses gradually um, um, shift down on her nose. 
And she was telling me that she was reading material on a table or on a lap, but she was definitely unable to hold any material in her hand. So I thought, well, we are then we are dealing with someone who has does some activities, but slightly further down compared to reading very close up. Um, so I selected her for um, uh, uh, the EMV lenses, and um, she was she was extremely happy. She was extremely happy. So this was a, an EMV toric lens. Um, 24, 23 with the toric edition. She ended up with 6.5 vision unaided and she was extremely pleased using iPads or uh, reading material on her table and uh, avoiding the need for any glasses. Obviously, she's not a driver. The second lady I selected for the EMV is a 56-year-old lady. She does a lot of um, online business. So she presented unaided vision 618, 624, it's someone who's very conscious of her appearance, doesn't like to wear glasses for distance, and actually she was walking around with this type of vision. Um, she doesn't even like glasses for, for computer, and she didn't really do a lot of very close reading. So most of her activity is based on computer. She had quite a significant medical history with breast cancer, thyroid cancer, allergic eye disease, asthma on treatment, antidepressants. So I thought, hmm, this lady wants to be glasses free, but there is a lot of comorbidity. There is probably a lot of um, psychiatric um, elements that may compromise a success if I offer a trifocal lens. And I thought probably an EMV, considering that most of our activities are computer-based, could make her happy. And she was very happy with an EMV. She didn't have any significant cylinder, so we went to 23.5 and 23. Extremely delighted. She has a bit of dry eye. Sorry, this is, um, has gone outside the frame. So we need to explore hobbies. So there are many of our patients have very interesting hobbies and we need to think that all these activities are fantastic opportunities for EMV lenses. Patients are happy with this type of lens. So the next patient is a 78 year old uh, female. Again, she lives alone, she's a driver. She plays piano most of her time um, and she presented with bilateral catra. So she told me straight away she was using very focus but now she was reaching a point where the very focus were not good for music were not good for reading were not good for driving and she wanted to drive com comfortably she had problems with night driving and she wanted to read the music unaided so again ideal patient we selected the EMV lens delighted after surgery she could read and play free from glasses and she was very safe and successfully corrected for distance for driving Another patient is a choir sing singer from West Sussex, very keen, again, he's a musician, he's a very serious opera singer in theatres and also local churches, but he wanted to read the music in dim light, which is a challenge even for patients with trifocal, and he wanted to be free from glasses for distance and mostly for his singing. So again, I thought probably the EMV would be a good solution. I told him that obviously close up reading when you are at home, you will need a pair of readers, happy with that and he was 6'6", six, six unaided with auto-refraction post-op, very, very good. So extremely delighted with this type of lens. Sometimes we see patients presenting with one cataract only without any significant refractive error in the other eye, and you really need to think about what shall I offer. Now in the past, for some young patients presenting with cataract, I've offered trifocal in the first eye. So these are patients in their 50s, they present, they have cortical cataract, sometimes they present with a white cataract, one eye only, 6-6 six, six vision in the other. And these are patients who are still working, driving, computer reading, many of them have got sports and expectation for perfect distance vision. So, Again, in these patients, we obviously need to discuss and understand what they do in their free time, but if they are emetropic in the good eye and they only need one eye done, an EMV lens may produce less imbalance than a trifocal lens having halos and glare in one eye. These lenses are exceptionally good optically from the quality of the optical point of view because they're very similar to a monofocal lens. So we always explain to patients, you won't have the glare with this. Yes, you could have a trifocal lens, but you will be prepared that the vision in both eyes will be different from the glare point of view, the quality, the contrast. These lenses have got the advantage that they behave like a monofocal, but a patient working with computer again will be very happy. And then whenever the time comes for the second eye, um, they, they will decide. This particular lady had very dry eyes. She had hypertension and she had a very hard, um, uh, she had some corneal astigmatism. So 
We went for a toric in, in one eye and she was delighted after surgery with 6-6 vision, second eye not needing any treatment. Now sometime this lady, she um, uh, lives across between the UK and Italy. She, again, she presented with cataract in one eye. She's very active. She's a mother of eight kids and she has five dogs and she's always out walking and, and traveling between Europe and the UK. Retired with a cataract in one eye. She wanted, again, to be free from glasses. She had a lot of glare. She had a cortical cataract, glare at night. And so we decided, I decided to offer the, the three options, monofocal, the trifocal, this is what you achieve. We could go for the middle lens with the EMV, you achieve a very good distance vision, matching your left eye, plus you can use your intermediate sat nav when you drive. And she was extremely delighted. She was so happy, she achieved 6.5 uh, with monorefractive error that she convinced me then to do the second eye. She wanted to have exactly the same vision in the second eye because the computer was much better actually in the right eye compared to the left. So then we ended up doing the left eye and she achieved 6.5. And she, this, the, the amazing thing is that you get them to read. N8 and 9, they read easily at 50 centimeters. Obviously, if you bring it forward, N4 and 6 is too much to ask. But N8 at 50, they can achieve it very easily. They're very comfortable. So this is a success story and she's, she's very delighted. Sometimes we manage with patients, they present with cataracts, maybe an early cataract, but they have some comorbidities. Again, they may have glaucoma, they may have dry AMD, they may have pigmentary changes in the macula. So these are not the ideal patients you want to push for a trifocal lens because over the next five, 10 years, they may develop more serious problems. And some of them may not be happy with a monofocal lens because basically you make them glasses dependent all the time for any near activity and intermediate activity. So eight-year-old female, bilateral cataract, she has glaucoma, she's on gamfo, she's got very dry eyes. So the ocular surface is not great. She's on glaucoma drops and she, the ocular surface will continue to deteriorate with age and with the glaucoma medication. So we discussed the possibility of the EMV 618, 612 vision. So both eyes with cataract. She also had a previous retina tear in one eye. She was treated with laser. She's a driver and she achieved very good vision, distance and intermediate, very happy reading the iPad, reading computer and obviously safer option. I wouldn't have offered a trifocal lens to this case. I would have gone for a monofocal otherwise. Um, this patient is a patient who presented with drusen, so cataracts, bilateral cataracts and drusen. Again, you wouldn't push this type of patient for a trifocal lens. He was quite ambitious. He wanted to do a bit, something better than the monofocal to achieve a higher level of independence. And again, he did very well. Refractive outcomes. I've been really, really impressed. I haven't had any refractive surprises. And so far, I've been very good. Now, some patients have very healthy eyes, no comorbidities, and you feel that they are potentially ideal patients for the trifocal lenses. You investigate what they do, what they can achieve. Previous history is good, and you feel that they could be good candidates. So the trifocal platform obviously offers the highest possible level of independence from glasses, but we always say, you never know. Some patients, for some activities, depending what you do, if you are a jeweler and you do watch repair, you may still need some magnification, a plus one. Uh, but they understand, as, uh, again, as long as we explain about the halos, about the glare, the need of adaptation, the neuroadaptation will go on for about eight weeks with these lenses. The adaptation learning, the distance for reading will go on for the first two months. But if they are prepared, they um, end up being very, very happy. Um, so obviously, we design, these are designed to achieve um, more independence for glasses. And it's nice that this lens is designed for less pupil dependencies. So this is because of the um, distribution of the rings. There are fewer rings compared to other lenses. The advantage from scientific reports, the rain at trifocal has less impact on reducing the illumination, the brightness on the retina compared to other lenses. Um, so again, we'll go through some cases. So again, this was a 65-year-old female, bilateral cataracts, Hyperopic lady, so she has a short axial length. She has very steep corneas. The K readings are 48, 50. She didn't have keratic corners. Topography was very regular, but very steep corneas and um, hyperopia. 
Uh, now, interestingly enough, um, she was 65, but she was still managing for distance vision unaided. She was only using reading glasses. So left eye for distance was 6'9", right eye 6'18", with a bit more cataract. And again, she really wanted, she, in her life, she's been very lucky. She's never had glasses. She was just using the reader now at 65, and she wanted to go back 10, 15 years when she didn't have any glasses. So again, very good general um, ocular health. The, the retina was fine, no glaucoma. And we went for toric trifocal lenses, and she ended up with a very good result, very good autorefraction, and she's very pleased, and she's independent from glasses. And this, I think we are on the last one. Again, a 78-year-old female, very frail she, with osteoporosis, hypertension. She had lots of falls, and she was attributing the falls to the poor vision. The cataracts were developing. She was 6-12 vision. She wanted to um, have a bit of everything. <laughs> she was concerned about her general condition, and she wanted to make the vision as good as possible. Retina was fine, no comorbidities. And so selected the trifocal uh, ray one lens, and she was very good. She had a very good outcome, very good refractive outcome. Uh, so the good thing is that the injector is always the same. Once you're familiar, even if you start from monofocal lenses, the injector behaves in the same way. They are preloaded lenses. The EMV, I've been very impressed so far. The results are excellent. Is a really a lens a step forward from the monofocal. And I, I, the more we use it, the more are the possible candidates that really are going to be happy with this lens. Um, and again, with the changes in our behavior and the kind of reading activities that we do, this lens will fit more and more into the new type of monofocal lenses for, for the years to come. Obviously, if there is any astigmatism, the astigmatism needs to be corrected. So not just relying on the biometry is very important to look at the topography and to look at the front and the posterior surface of the cornea. I haven't had any cases for repositioning, and obviously uh, the assessment of the patient at the beginning is always the most important step. Thank you very much. Thank you.